Hi, welcome to a small tutorial for Web2 on deploying your APIs. So my name is Mike Dereke and I'm a teacher at Erasmus School Brussels. So today, we're, this is a very beginner friendly tutorial for people who have not hosted anything before, who are new to uh, getting their stuff online and specifically on an Express API. Now, what is an Express API? Of course, it's an API that you can call from external places to get data, save data and manage everything in your database. Now, the, the, the software or the service that we are going to be using is Render. Uh, in the past, we used Heroku, but they lost their free tier. So other competitors have um, yeah, filled in that gap. And Render is one of the easiest that I found uh, to be working with for a school level. Now, if there are other services that, that, that you would like to see a tutorial on, uh, leave a comment below and I'll see what I can do to uh, figure that one out and also make something to the point. Now... Before we start, what do we actually need? Well, we need a repository that is actually, uh, that holds an Express API. So this is my repository. This is a public one for uh, ease of use, for the permissions, etc. But it is nothing more, nothing less than one of the exercises that we make in Web2. So for here, we have a board game API with uh, some routes. Uh, I, I will show it in in code that might be easier. So we have a very basic uh, node project. We have one index.js that uses the Express API. We have, we have a connection to MongoDB. We allow all uh, requests to come in. So that's why we added the course stuff. The, like going specifically into security for course is outside of the scope of, of this tutorial. Uh, what else do we have? We have a public folder with a very default HTML that shows you which routes are available. So as you can see, we have the route that will show us the documentation. We have the slash board games that will get all board games, get a specific board game and save a board game. These are not the best practices, but again, this is just a very basic demo on this one. So for the routes itself, I will not go into uh, the, de the defaults on how to build an Express API. One thing I do want to mention, though, is something that we have never done in the previous exercises, which, which is defining our port. Now, forcing a port like 1337, which might be funny to us, forcing a port on a service will not work because they determine which port is used for that API. Uh, and that's why we add a parameter. So something like um, environment variables, which is something that you can control by adding an environment file here, .env. If we add an environment file here like this, port equals, let's say, 1338, then the moment we run our node server, it will use the variable that is found in that environment file. This is how we determine uh, the specifics on whether we should use development credentials or production uh, credentials. For example, my details, I will not show them in this tutorial, are all contained in the config.json file, which is just a JSON object containing URLs to connect to my Mongo database. So my password is in there, my username is in there, uh, and all those things uh, are available in here. Now, this is a demo uh, Mongo database, so no harm done if this should fail. But again, make sure that you have this port uh, added to it so that render can fill that in automatically. The OR signal will automatically fill in 1337 for the port if this is not found. So, for example, for local development reasons. Besides this, um, this development um, repo, we also need, of course, our Mongo database, which is, uh, in my case, this one. So, session 5 board games. It controls three board games, Terra Mystica, Gloomhaven, and Food Chain Magnet. And at the end here, we will be pushing uh, a, new, a, a new board game into this database using an online deployed um, the, um, API. So what do, what, what do we have? We have our API, we have the, the code that is working on a local environment. What do we need? We need Postman for testing. That will come uh, handy later. And of course, we need an account on Render. So I already have an account. Uh, let's go to Dashboard. 
as you might see, I have, of course, done this before and uh, I suspended this web service because I wanted to start from scratch uh, with all of you. So to create a new web service, you add the plus icon and click on web service. And then you need to connect uh, a Git repository. Now, because I am part of a um, school organization which has thousands of repositories, this might take a while. Uh, so I'm just gonna use the public repository here. If you have your private account and your private account just contains uh, the like 10 or 15 or 20 uh, repos, then you should be able to select them here. This does not load for me, so I'm using a public URL. So I'm going to um, my my uh, GitHub. I'm going to copy paste this URL. Of course, we get we're we're gonna name our service um, web two demo tutorial. The region where it should be hosted. Of course, try to take Europe because Europe uh, has a lower latency. Of course, uh, from your location, uh, the branch main that means which branch are we going to deploy when we are placing that api online for our case i only have one branch which is the main uh let me check the main branch which has been up, up, uh, updated 60 minutes ago with a readme file so we are going to be updating the main branch um the root directory if there is a different directory where your API or the, the, the thing that you are hosting is located, you can define it here. We don't need it because our API itself is the root. That means that our index.js file is here and our package.json file, which we also need for uh, the, the dependencies installment, uh, is also here. So this is our root. We do not need to change that. The environment is node. The build command and the start command, we're going to leave like this. But of course, this command should not be unfamiliar to you, which is node index.js running the actual application. We're going to be using the free tier, of course, because we have enough of 512 megabytes of RAM. Uh, and I think we can start creating the web service. It is now in progress. So now you are in the um, da dashboard for the specific yeah, settings of your API. And you see it automatically starts to um, execute some features. You can leave this as it is. I just wanna go over the things you see here at the top, which is your actual URL. And this is a thing that uh, for beginners might be new because if you run your API locally, then you should be posting and fetching from um, localhost uh, colon 1337 slash and then your endpoint because your local host is the one that is run on your uh, machine. But now we are going to de be deploying this project in the cloud and everybody should be able to call to it. Also, since we have added uh, no course restrictions, so anybody can access our Express API. Uh, and this will be the URL. So for example, anyone watching this tutorial right now can go to web-2-demo-tutorial.onrender.com and you should see my documentation page. Now, of course, if it's still up, if, if you're watching this in 2025, then I cannot guarantee that this is still up and running. But as you can see here in the documentation, it's still linking dependencies, success done, and it's generating an image for the build. Now, if you already have errors here, that means that something went wrong in your API by itself. So that means that it does not work out of the gate. Something happened with your dependencies. It cannot be installed. So make sure everything runs uh, fine before you start uploading this. Um, and take a look at my demo here in the uh, public space. If you want to change any of these settings that we just did for the root directory for the uh, other things, you can go to settings and there you can see there are things to adjust, uh, to edit if things go wrong and you can still um, change all of those. Now let's uh, skip ahead for a couple of minutes and let's see when uh, the deployment is done.
All right, so we're back and things are not going as I would like to. <laughs> so uh, small things uh, to look at when things are going wrong are the logs. So here in the logs, it says the API is running. Um, the port is still wrong because that is um, a hard coded message, which is my fault, but it was 409 and now it is 420. So now, no, uh, no pun intended, of course. And it is still deploying. Um, I deployed it. So here it failed. I don't know why it doesn't give me any issues. So I, I was like, okay, let's redeploy. It may be, be because I have two web services here, both using the same repo, the same Git repo. So this keeps going, which is frustrating, but the fun thing is the other one automatically deployed it for me. So as you can see, when it looks and uh, when it sees a new commit has been posted to the repo, which is the update readme commit, which I've done about 37 minutes ago, it automatically deploys it for you. So in this case, this service is live, so it uh, it uh, deployed without issues. So I assume this is also new for me that this one, because it's just using the same Git repo, is having some issues. So you know what? I'm going to delete this one because I don't want this anymore. This one was suspended, uh, so I'm going to unsuspend it. It's at the bottom here, resume web service, and then this should work or at least start up again. Um, service resumed. I see it is up and running. So now you can continue to the next part. So again, I have it up and running. It's resumed. If I look at the logs, I, I think I will see a new, ah, here, 423, which is the exact time that I'm running this and it's actually running. So again, how do you update this? The moment you, if I put something else in here, I put an extra route in here for, for testing, I am done. I can commit all these changes, that change, if you commit and push it to your origin point, to your GitHub, the render will automatically take that commit and deploy it for you. You might want to check if everything went okay in the events section. So in my case, I saw that everything went uh, create uh, went okay. That uh, 344, it saw the new commit. It started a deploy. Somehow it canceled it for, for another one. I don't care. And then it was live. So that means that it worked. Okay, so now that we have it live, time to test it out. So again, when, once I go to the regular URL slash info.html, I can go um, to another endpoint, which is board games. And as you can see, this is the filter that um, Firefox uses for uh, JSON. So the raw data is, of course, just a JSON object. But as you can see, we see Terra Mystica, we see Gloomhaven, and we see Food Chain Magnets, all three database uh, board games that we have in here. So of course, now we can continue. Uh, for the other routes, I will use Postman. So I created the new collection with all my routes. And as you can see, this is something new for most of you. It uses a base URL variable. Now, where do you set those variables on collection level? Why is this? When I'm testing, I can either be testing locally or I can be testing online on a test environment or online on a production environment. So I do not want to update my URLs constantly. What I do want is to be easily switching for testing between a local environment, a testing environment, and a production environment. So in my API, I have, in my collection, I have variables. Uh, I'm gonna close this a bit. And as you can see, I have the variable base URL, the initial value in this case is, I can say, you know what? I'm gonna test locally. So I have localhost 1337, and this will work once I have the application running here in VS Code. Now I am working online right now. So my URL is a different one. So it's the demo web two login on render.com. And the old one is the uh, Heroku one. So I'm gonna replace that one. And then we can test. So if we call the root, we should get an HTML page back. All right, I'll figure out the issue. The issue was that I did not save my uh, changes. So when you add variables, I just deleted the, the other one for uh, demo purposes, um, is that the moment you make an adjustment, so for example, let's say we add another one, 
base URL and that is HTTP localhost 1337. If I make this, then there's a small dot here in the top that uh, says it has been changed, but not saved. So control S and you save it. And now you can change between those two. So we will be using, of course, the on render system. So to test it all out, we'll start with the board games. We cannot send the request. So that means, uh, again, I changed the check marks. I did not save, making the same mistake twice. All board games, click and we get all the board games. Okay, now we're, now we're cooking. We get one board game, we get Gloomhaven, as you can see, perfectly working Express API. And now of course for the pièce de résistance, the, the most important thing is actually saving data in the database. We have a save board game route, we have a post request in the body. I am adding my current favorite board game tapestry and I'm using send game and it says board game successfully saved. Now, how can we check that? Check that we can go into actually the board games. There are currently three. If I refresh my data, you will see that tapestry should be in there. Or at least I need to make a very creative cut in this tutorial yet again. Loading documents, Terra Mystica, Gloomhaven, Food Chain Magnet and Tapestry. So now that everything works, you have your API up and running in Express. And I would say um, use this to your advantage. Make sure it's up and running as fast as possible. Make new commits and adjustments to your um, to your uh, API and test it while it's online. Make sure others can test it as well. I thank you for uh, your attention and I'll see you in the next video.